today we're gonna to be making a delicious chocolate cake from scratch that you can make in the backcountry. Normally we teach you how to make things from start to finish in the backcountry, but today we're gonna to teach you how to do something that's a little bit more involved for one of those luxury camping trips. You might call it glamping. Glamping, yeah, this is a great dish if you wanna impress your friends, you wanna show them what you can do on a camp stove. Uh, it's delicious, sweet, and scrumptious. Today for our recipe, uh, we're gonna be combining some dry ingredients and some wet ingredients. And so for our dry ingredients here, we're gonna be combining two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, we're gonna have a half cup of cocoa powder. We've got a half cup of chocolate chips. We'll also add two teaspoons of salt. We'll need half a teaspoon of baking powder as well. And then we'll combine our wet ingredients once we get to the campsite. But in order to make things more efficient at the campsite, we've gone ahead and combined all those dry ingredients here in one bag. So once we get to our spot, we'll just pull out the cake mix and be ready to go. So we're gonna be using one cup of butter here. We're not using very much water, just three fourths of a cup. Just so that you get a more even texture in your cake, we can't whip this butter like you would do in a normal cake batter. Uh, so we're just gonna melt it into the water. So we got uh, three quarters of a cup of water, we got a cup of butter, and we're gonna be adding two raw eggs. If you wanna use powdered eggs, you can use one tablespoon of the, the powdered eggs and three tablespoons of water uh, for each egg in your recipe. After the raw eggs, you definitely wanna make sure that you're washing the hands. Break up the eggs. Stir them in together with the water and the butter. And then little by little, I'll have uh, Casey add the dry mixture and I'll just keep stirring. You never want to over mix your batter. You just want to mix it until everything's combined. Let's add that one tablespoon of vanilla. So what I'm gonna do is just flour, lightly flour the bottom of this pan so that it doesn't stick. You don't want to use oil because in this recipe, there's a lot of sugar and if you do, it tends to stick to the bottom. So we're just gonna flour it. And while Casey's doing that, I'll build our tower of power over here. You'll Recall that from both the cinnamon rolls and the quiche recipes. We'll raise this, the fry bake up on the Tower of Power and then we'll also cover the fry bake with this pot parka which um, has this reflective surface inside the fabric so it'll just create a nice contained system uh, sort of mimicking an oven in the backcountry. Check out this link right here for more information on this pot parka. Now as you'll recall in order to depressurize the stove I'm going to just turn the fuel off and blow out the flame and then I'll go to my fuel bottle and I'll just open it until I hear the hiss of fuel meaning that I've released some of that pressure and I'll secure it again and then I will turn it on and light it again so that we have a nice lower temperature on our whisper light. There is a lot of sugar in this recipe which has a tendency to burn so you gotta be really careful about maintaining that nice low flame on the whisper light. And I'm just gonna pour the batter on into that fry bake. As with any backcountry baking endeavor, you're gonna to wanna to check this frequently. So we're definitely starting to get done around the edges, but it looks like you can see they're still jiggly in the middle. So what we're gonna do is take this thing off and finish it with a twiggy fire. So the twiggy fire is a nice way of sending heat down to the food from above. So we'll go ahead and um, turn off the stove here in a minute and start the fire on top of the lid. Okay, we've got a pile of twigs here um, and we're gonna use our stove to our advantage to get things started here. Find a, a Y-shaped stick, you're gonna lay some sticks across the top and, and use the flame from the stove to light it. Now this is definitely something you wanna be really intentional about and very careful with. You don't wanna just start a twiggy fire in the middle of a dry field, for example. Um, you know, you wanna have a way to put it out nearby. Just make sure that that lid has a nice tight seal so you're not getting any ash in your food. So a nice way to finish off this cake is to make a chocolate frosting for it, uh, which is really easy to do four tablespoons of butter. And then we have a little pre-mix here with half a cup of sugar, half a cup of cocoa mix. To add to that, two tablespoons of water. We're just gonna put it over some low heat and stir this up while the butter melts and everything combines. And one thing you'll wanna make sure, as with any frosting and cake scenario, we'll wanna let the cake cool off before we try to add the frosting. And add one teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna cook this until we start seeing some bubbles. We've burned our uh, Twiggy fire down to pretty much ash here. Um, and I'm just gonna take a look. That looks great. So I think we're probably ready to frost it. Spread it out nice and even on your cake. So there you have it, your very own cake baked in the backcountry. This is a nice chocolate cake made on a whisper light. Unbelievable. Amazing. I mean, whisper light, stove. Terrific. 
Taste the chocolatey goodness, my friend. That's delectable. Oh my god, Anna. it's got layers! It's got the Casey, nice fudgy chocolate. It's delicious. beautiful. Dude. 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 The highest grade <laughs> right there. Dude. <laughs> that is stunning. That is stunning. Culinary excellence. <laughs>